Welcome. In this brief lecture, we'll be looking at uh, the nature of revolutions and revolutionary movements. We'll also be exploring the major factors that contribute to the conditions necessary uh, for a successful revolution. If you're interested in exploring this topic further, the James DeFranzo book, Revolutions and Revolutionary Movements, um, offers further insights into this topic. Um, as we consider revolutionary movements throughout this course, keep these concepts in mind um, during your analyses. We should first begin by differentiating between revolutions and social movements. We might define a social movement as a determined effort by a group of people to bring about social change or to oppose some form of social change. Some examples in U.S. history of social movements include the abolitionist movement, the various anti-war movements, the civil rights movement, or the more recent same-sex marriage movement. One of the major differences between a social movement and a revolution is the more limited goals of a social movement. Advocates of a given social movement generally seek to change just a limited number of aspects of society, but they generally do not seek to drastically overhaul or replace entire social, political, or economic systems. For example, the women's rights movement that began to gain traction in the 1960s and 1970s did not seek the overthrow of the capitalist system or to replace an entire government apparatus, but rather uh, sought more limited goals like equal pay and uh, equal rights for women. A revolution, by contrast, is a social movement where participants seek to drastically alter or completely overturn the existing social, political, and or economic order. For example, in the Bolshevik Revolution, control of the economy quickly came under control of Lenin and the Bolsheviks, and the Communist Party also restructured the political and social institutions of the former Russian Empire. Revolutions differ from social movements in the wider range of methods used to bring about change as well. In particular, most revolutions employ violence, or at least the threat of violence, as one means of achieving change, while violence is rarely a preferred tactic in social movements. The use of violence by revolutionary groups threatens the existing regime, and such groups are likely to be branded as terrorists in the modern sense of the term. Terrorism, of course, is subject to individual interpretation, as in the case of the Boston Tea Party in 1773. To many 21st century Americans, the political protest that was led by the Sons of Liberty is an iconic moment in the American Revolution, but to officials and shareholders, for example, of the British East India Company, the destruction of 90,000 pounds of tea, which would have a value in 2014 of something like $2 million, was an act of terrorism against the private property of a corporation. One might imagine the outcry in the present-day United States if protesters from the, say, the Occupy movement uh, destroyed millions of dollars worth of inventory in brand new cars or laptop computers in their efforts to send a message. Revolutions occur for a wide variety of reasons, and no two revolutions are really alike in nature and evolution or the course of the revolution. Citizens may be upset at perceived inequalities, at governmental corruption, uh, ethnic discrimination, political oppression, or religious persecution. However, there are a number of conditions that seem to be particularly important factors in successful revolutions, and most successful revolutions exhibit these two. Revolutions cannot develop without mass frustration, as Dame James DeFranzo put it, on the part of rural and or urban populations. People rebel because they are unhappy with existing conditions. In less technologically developed societies, peasant frustration and rebellion is a necessary precursor to revolution. In more advanced societies, it is usually urban rebellion that's a precursor to revolutions. Generally speaking, the term relative deprivation is used by sociologists to describe the difference between the social, political, and or economic expectations of a population and the population's ability to meet those expectations. Relative deprivation may occur for a wide variety of reasons. This may occur because of losing a war or due to an environmental catastrophe such as a drought or an earthquake. Relative deprivation may also occur when the expectations of people are raised but cannot be met, 
such as with the introduction of mass media to an impoverished population, which allows the poor a sort of window outside to see what might be possible, and thus their expectations are raised. In most revolutions, there are segments of the established elite class who turn against the government for political or economic reasons. In the case of the American Revolution, some of the most significant members of the revolutionary movement were from what is sometimes referred to by historians as the plantation elite or plantation aristocracy. Washington, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe were just a few of the illustrious individuals who became disenchanted with the British monarchy and threw their lot in with the revolution. Without the money, the talent, and the organizational skills of social elites, revolutions are much more likely to fail. The motivations for revolution need to transcend class and ethnic lines in order for there to be a successful revolution. In the case of the February Revolution in 1917 in Russia, there were a wide range of political competitors and different visions for the future of Russia, but virtually everyone in the country, including the Tsar's own brother, agreed that the Romanov dynasty needed to go. Most successful revolutions exhibit some form of a serious political crisis with the existing regime that severely weakens the government's ability to carry out normal operations, especially in terms of counterinsurgency or military activity. This may be uh, due to an unprecedented natural disaster, a defeat during war, an economic depression, or some other factor that disrupts the government's capacity to carry out regular functions. This inability to cope with crisis may cause a government to lose further credibility with the population and cause further loss of loyal personnel from its ranks. Many revolutions, including the French Revolution, the uh, Russian Revolution, and the Syrian Revolution that's ongoing right now, were caused in part by poor harvests and famine. Successful revolutions, finally, are in part dependent upon external factors. If outside nations do not oppose, or if they actively support revolutionary movements, they are much more likely to be successful. U.S. involvement, for example, in Vietnam delayed for decades the completion of the communist revolution in that country. Likewise, military intervention by the Soviets in Hungary in 1956 and Czechoslovakia in 1968 quelled nascent revolutionary movements in those countries. This draws to a close our brief look at uh, the nature of revolution.